today we want to kind of kind of continue along the lines of what we've been talking about. We've been talking about darkness and how great is your light. If that light be darkness, he says, if that I be single, thy body shall be full of light. And that, but that that light be darkness, how great is that light? Hmm. Now uh, we've also been talking about um, the natural man, the spiritual man, versus a man your carnality, your spirituality, and then. We've been talking about you growing in grace, in the knowledge, understanding how God grow you. I'm so glad to see Brother Patrick get filled the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. I really thank God for that, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Such as his wife is just so smiling and so just happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we, then he said he ain't been angry. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Let me just shout for him. <laughs> so that in itself just makes it all one. I think as you see the pulpit, brother. Uh, I didn't do this, brother Dwayne and Ruben. <laughs> they started, but, but I was, we were supposed to take the stuff off the pulpit. They got so upset with my work. I'm just teasing. Amen. They decided to redo it so we was able to get some new ones. So we're going to do it the right way this time. So I thank God, Brother Ruben, because me and Brother Dwayne would have definitely messed it up. Because uh, Brother Ruben was like, no, no, we got to mark it. I was just going to cut it. No, 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 we got to do this here. <laughs> so he made sure we do it the right way. We had a beautiful fellowship. I thank God for that. Thank God Thank God for all the men that are in here, Brother Charles, all of you, Brother Brother Renzo. Thank God for all of you. You make church coming to church so easy. Good to see you, Sister Smith. I was about to call you. I was going to you know. I was going to say, see you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, amen. So I was amen. But I thank God your testimony, Anisha. Amen. You on fire. Amen. And you go through life while you're young because you have a great future. Amen. God got something. When God allowed you to have adult experiences when you're young, it's because you stay with God. That experience is going to season you mm -hmm. to be an encourager for somebody. I got saved when I was 19 years old. Filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Got married when I was 20 years old. So my youth life was all about being responsible, amen, and being what it was supposed to be. And I've been saved for 35 years, healed, and everything is speaking in tongues, amen. So I'm grateful to that, amen. So I'm not a novice in this, amen. I'm not just doing this, amen. I'm doing this because it's the will of the Lord for my life. But I want you to go to the book of Genesis 2 and 9. Uh, we're going to start from there. Now, if I happen to just go around, amen, just stay with me, I'll bring us home. Amen. Amen. But, um, and some of you this morning, this is going to be a miracle service this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. Listen to me really good. This is going to be a miracle service yes. for somebody. Yes. When you come out of here today, yes. you're going to receive a miracle in your life. Yes. So the Vivian's testimony affirms already prayer works. Yes. Amen. Yeah, she, she ain't going to be on that car. Amen. But God, is, see, I told y'all, when you think you need this and you have your faith, God is the one that touches people's heart. Mm. God is the one that can make people change their mind. Yes. And when you don't have money and you got faith, mm. you need to start exercising your mind. Amen. You start, need to start decreeing and declaring. Yes. You need to start speaking to the voices that are trying to tell you what God can do and tell them voices what God can do. Yeah. You cannot allow the voice of the enemy to so remember what we were talking about. We were talking about as the serpent beguiled Eve through facility. I pray your minds be not corrupted from the simplicity which is in truth. So the serpent is still trying to beguile the minds or deceive the minds of God's people just like he did with Adam and Eve. We also let you understand through the scripture teaching that the serpent, which was the devil, he was the wisest beast in the field. That means was nothing more smarter in the field than the devil. He was cunning. He was crafty. He was deceitful. He was a trickster. He can fool you. He know how to get under your mind and mess with your head. Hmm. He's the devil. He's still the devil. Hmm. And now the children of disobedience allow the devil to get into their heart and get into their minds. And they listen to the voice thinking that it's God talking to them. Hmm. Let me tell you something about God. All the pathways of the Lord are peace. Hmm. 
God leads you, then sometimes God will lead you by a way that you don't even know. Mm. That's when you have to trust. When you are in a place of unfamiliarity and you have never been there, this is when you got to trust the all-seeing eye God and mm. close your eyes. See, to trust God is to close your eyes and let him guide you. Yes. That's right. To trust God is to not open your eyes when God leading you. Because mm -hmm. once you open your eyes of understanding, you are going to confuse yourself with the way God is working things out in your life. Because mm. you can't figure it out. God, why this person? Why? Because why? God is ordering your step. You don't know who your blessing going to come through. So you got to be careful. You're looking for it to come in the mail. And it might be your neighbor. You're looking for it sometime to come through your neighbor. And it might be in the mail. You're looking for it to come through the mail or the neighbor. And God might use the very person you don't think God would ever use to do something good for you. Let me tell you something. When your ways please the Lord, he'll make your enemies be at peace with you. The very people that been talking about you, the very people been lying on it, the very people that don't like you when you come in the room, they cringe. When your ways please the Lord, how do I please the Lord? It is impossible to please God without faith. When you got faith, you are pleasing God. Don't let that all say to you. Let's not get it confused. Amen. The only thing that God responds to, amen, is not always your whining and your crying. Because if your tears are not exercised in faith, you just dropped a lot of tears. Mm. You just did a lot of crying. But until you put faith in those tears, you're coming to God with a broken heart a contrite spirit believing that the eyes of the Lord are in every place and that God is touched by what you're going through which is your infirmity. Amen. God says a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he will not despise. He will not look down on you and, and, just, and look down on you in a funny way and walk over you. He sees your brokenness. He sees your heaviness. He hears your tears. He's touched by your infirmity. He knows the faith that you present to him because your faith is more precious than silver or gold. So when you're broke, amen, pull out your faith. Amen. When you ain't got no money, pull out your faith. When you don't know where money gonna come from, exercise your faith. Faith will move the mountain. Faith will tell sickness, get out of my body. Faith will cause your sickness to move. Hallelujah. When the doctors are saying, amen, we're going to put a period, amen, and say that you are sick and you ain't got but six months to live. That's when you got to exercise your faith. That's when you got to turn your face to the wall and start talking to the God that's touched by the feelings of your infirmity. That's when you got to let folk go and say, man, say, I can't do it. But the word of God says, all things are possible to him that believes. Hallelujah. If you look at your neighbor and say, I believe God. And I don't care what it look like, but I believe God. It's just a temporary situation because God is testing me. God is trying me. God is proving me because he's perfecting the things that are in me that are not perfected. So God allows me to go through some trials and tribulations. He holds back my blessings so he can trust me and see. What do you mean, Pastor? He'll hold back and I'll let you see it, yes, but won't let you get it yes. until you show yourself worthy yes. of the faith fight. Yes. First lady, he'll let you get so close to it yes. to give you the hope, but there's an enemy that's trying to stop you from crossing the finish line. You can't get your blessing until you turn to your enemy and tell that enemy, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So you turn to your sickness and tell your sickness by your stripes, I'm healed. You ain't gonna get your blessing.
lesson huh, until you look in your enemies huh, and tell your enemies. Your enemies may not be around you. Look in the mirror and call your enemies' name and say, I love my enemies. Huh, and I pray that God will bless you. I pray that it's worth well for you. I pray things turn around for you because I'm going to get my blessing because huh, I'm going to release all the stuff that's inside of me that's keeping me from my blessing. You looking at the money in your pocket and it ain't that much. You looking at the money in your bank account and it's empty. You looking at that at your check and it ain't gonna get no larger. Huh? But you need to turn to God. They can make things stretch out when you ain't got no living. Huh? Lord have mercy. Huh? I got to preach this. Huh? Jesus took five. Jesus took five what? Loaves of bread and two fish and fed a multitude of thousands. Hallelujah. How do you take two fish, huh? five loaves of bread, and feed thousands? And I'll tell you how you can do it. Have faith in God. God will take the little that you got and stretch it out. You might not make but $900 a month, but that $900 favor on your life, when you got grace on your life, you got to stop acting like God is not touched by your infirmity. When you got favor on your life, when you got grace on your life, you have to stop acting like God don't answer prayer. God answers the prayers of the righteous. You say, well, that's what that ain't all that righteous. It ain't about your righteousness that he answered. He's looking at the righteousness of his son who died for your sin and by virtue of his righteousness, hallelujah, God looks past you and see Jesus' righteousness. So don't come talk. So you need to learn how to tell the devil, I am the righteousness of God. I am Christ Jesus. Amen. No self will tell you, you ain't all that good. You ain't that perfect. But I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, if the enemy start playing games with your mind and start trying to mess with your thinking, well, how are you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? I just saw you drinking last night. I saw you kicking it in the club last night. How you this? How you that? Because his mercies are new every day. Hallelujah. He said, if I sin, I have an advocate with the Father. My Father, amen, is just. He's faithful to forgive me and watch this. He'll bring you from some unrighteousness. Oh, oh. oh. Do you understand what that means? Right. Mm. I don't think you get that. That means whatever wrong you've done, yes, when you turn to God, yes, the blood mm. still works. Yes. Mm. Yes. The blood was shed for remission, yes. means for the removal. Mm. He done away with the blood was shed for the remission of my sins. Yes, yes. That when I confess my sin, yes, he forgives me of what I did. Yes, yes. When I get out of my mouth, yes, yes. when I come up out of prayer, I need to come up out of prayer thanking him. Oh, you say, Adam Washington, I don't feel like thanking him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, shut up with the feeling and just open up your mouth and say, thank you, 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 thank you. Because if faith is predicated on feelings, none of us would be saved. Amen. Faith is not predicated on feelings. Faith is just the reality of creation. Faith is God in the volume of the book. Faith is you believing that God can do anything but fail. You can have what you want if you believe that God can do it. And if you're willing to endure the hardness that come with your request. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay, let's give an example. God gonna bless me with a job. Well, okay. God gonna make me, say that again. God gonna bless me to be a millionaire. Okay. Mm. How he gonna do that? Oh, he just gonna bless me. I know it. How? I fail to realize. God is a God that operates with a plan. God 
is a God that taught the church. Without a vision, the people perish. Yeah. So without your vision, you have no plan. And if you have no plan, you have no vision. And if you have no vision, you have no sight. So if you have no sight, then you are not, you just wake it up in the morning existing. You wake up on Monday, you ain't got nothing to do. You wake up on Tuesday, you ain't got nothing to do. You wake up on Wednesday, you ain't got nothing to do. Because you have no plan. You ain't living. Amen. You existing. And you don't have no life. You got life, but you ain't living. Mm. Mm. Well, I tell you, life, God did not give you life to just stay in your house, not go nowhere, and say, I'm saved. Mm. I go in my house, I go outside. I'm saved. I even say, I'm saved. I love the Lord. Amen. But you're the most hellish minded person. Oh, you look saved on the outside. Mm. Uh -huh. That's why you don't want nobody to get close to you. Because what's in you, you'll always show up. Mm. I'm supposed to be talking about overcoming evil. I ain't even got there yet. The Bible says, Jesus prayed a prayer. He said, I pray, 17th chapter book of St. John, you can do it if you want to. He said, I pray that you take them not out the world, but that you keep them from the, what? Evil. evil. Which is in the world. Amen. Evil. You cannot be kept from the evil which is in this world if you don't let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Christ. Right, right, right. Amen. The mind of Christ is what renewed you. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you don't read what's in the volume of the book, your mind can't be renewed. Now, if your mind is not being renewing from the reading of the book, then that means the light that's in you is not the light of Christ. Because it's not the light of life. Life is the light that comes from the words of God's book. Amen. The light that comes in you gives you life. Mm. Yes, Lord. This life is the life of Christ in your flesh. Your life is here in God. Amen. Now what does it mean my life is here in God? That means I'm here. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes. I'm, I, I'm covered. Yes. I'm protected. Yes. What covers me is life that conquered death. Life that conquered hell. Yes. Life that conquered the grave, mm. life that conquered sin, mm. life that conquered shame, mm. life that conquered depression, mm. life that conquered over suicide, mm. life of Jesus who conquered death, hell, and the grave. And when you are here in God, in Christ, uh. you are more than a conqueror that's in Christ Jesus. Mm. So that means the life that's in you is the power of God to conquer the things that are challenging the God that's on the inside of you. So when things come upon you, it's not to worry, it's not to go crazy, it's to call on the conqueror that's inside of you yeah. because the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when you tap into somebody to tap into your greater, tap into tap your greater, into your greater and tell yourself, self greater says, I am more than a conqueror. Tell yourself, self greater says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Self greater says that by his stripes I am healed. Self, God says, I am healed of cancer. Self, God says, I'm healed of sarcoidosis. Self, God says, I'm healed of this disease. I'm healed of this illness. I'm healed of this situation. If you believe God, you ought to tell yourself, I am a healer. I'm delivered. I'm free. It's something that we have to deal with. And it's all around us. Go to Acts 19 and 9. I'm not going to get to all these scriptures because I'm almost done. Because we got to do Holy Communion today. 19 and 9. Acts 19 and 9. 
Now, I might get to Genesis, but I'm just going to work in like Acts 19 and 9. Look at that pretty thing. <laughs> 19 and 9. See, that's how some of y'all in the church walk. Amen. 19 and 9. See how the little baby walk? Mm. I told somebody about Promised Land. Promised Land is a church where we have a lot of babes in Christ. Mm -hmm. A lot of adults in here, a lot of grown people. But you're new to the Lord. Yeah. And when you're new to the Lord, you don't do everything right. Amen. Because you don't know. Because the knowledge of Christ that's right ain't in you. So you're assembled in the house of God to grow in knowledge, to grow in grace, and to grow in the things of God. So when you're growing in the things of God, I don't think nobody in here can judge nobody. Amen. 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 Maybe I'm talking to the church down the street over here. Uh, no. I, I, I don't think nobody should be wasting no time and energy trying to judge somebody that they see in this church doing something that they don't think is right. Because somebody can look at you and see something that's wrong with you too. Amen. So, you know, so let, let's see. So nobody should be. See, first of all, we shouldn't be finding faults. Because if you can, you can find fault with anybody if you look long enough. The best of the best. If you look, you can find fault. So we don't want to be fault finders. So look what he says in the 19th chapter, Book of Acts. Now you can read the rest of the chapter in your own leisure. Amen. But he says, Amen. In the 19th chapter, I would probably start reading over it. Nah, 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 nah. Let's just start at the sixth verse. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. He went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing, what was he doing? Disputing. And persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers mm. were hardened and believed not, what did they do? They spake evil of the way before the multitude. And he departed from them. And separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jew and Greek. Now I want to go back. But when divers were hardened, various people, they were hardened in heart. How many of you have heard people speak evil of the way? Hmm. That preacher ain't no good. I heard he was this. That church ain't right. Don't fool with them old church folks. You're hearing evil is being spoke in the way. Mm. You can't put no confidence in no preacher. You can't trust no man. See, see, right now, most of you need to be listening, but you ain't listening because the devil don't want you to hear what you need to hear. Amen. Amen. See, that's why he said, he that has an ear, ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church. Amen. I shared yesterday with the brother, and, I, and, and it really touched me, and I didn't know it was going to touch me like that. But I had been praying, and I said, you know, I don't want to see nobody lost. I don't know how many days I got to live. But I know that at the age that I am now, there have been some mistakes that I made in my past. Hmm. And I've come this far that I'm looking to live to be 100. Yes. But if you don't let me live but 10 more years, I want to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Now, I said that because the job and the responsibility of you that are born again when you grow is to pull somebody else in. It is not, it shouldn't be your desire to feel like, because you don't know when you're going to die. You just don't know. You don't know the number of your days. You don't know if you got long time, short time. But you do know that if you wake up this morning, God gave you this day. Amen. Now, since he done gave me this day, you don't have but 24 hours in that one day. Right. Mm. You really don't have, you're going to sleep about 8 to 12 hours, some of you, in that one day if you go to bed around 8 o'clock <laughs> or if you go to bed at 10 o'clock. So that means you really are active maybe about 8 to 10 hours. In one day. Because mm -hmm. other times you're in your house. Amen. Now, what am I saying? If you were in your house for about 10 hours a day, what kind of hell are you doing in your house? Mm. And trouble are you doing in your house? Mm. You work on a job 10 hours, 8 hours a day. Mm. So you come home, you all, you got a little leisure time. I'm trying to get you to break down your life and show you where evil is coming from. 
So in the midst of that day or that moment you're living, what is it that's coming in your life that's messing with you? Say that again. She didn't say the telephone, y'all. She said that telephone. <laughs> See, you ain't got to leave out your bedroom. You ain't got to leave out your house to get in trouble. Matter of fact, you can pick up that phone and you can get in trouble on Facebook. You can get in trouble on the phone talking to somebody. Your spirit can get messed up because you got a call. Your spirit can get messed up because somebody made you mad. All because you are not watching. He says there are 12 hours in a day. When night coming, no man can work. Now he's not talking about working a job. Mm -hmm. He's talking about when darkness comes. Mm -hmm. No man, when darkness comes, it's hard to work in the night. Mm -hmm. But that's why he tells you to walk in the light. Mm -hmm. We are the children of the day, not the children of the night. But when night comes to you, the worldly friend, your worldly girly girl, girl. Hmm. You ain't been thinking like that until you hook up with her. Now you revisit stuff that you ain't thought about in months. Hmm. Now she gone home and now them thoughts that you ain't thought about, she done dug up and left you to yourself with them thoughts. Hmm. See, I need some of y'all to hear this. Some of y'all need to let certain things stay buried. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Memory lane don't do nothing for you but stir up some of you the root of bitterness. Mm. Make you remember why you still single. Make you remember why you don't want no man. Why you don't want to be fooling with nobody. Mm. Amen. Because some mm. things are just need to be dead and they just need to stay dead. Yeah. But when the enemy brings that darkness to you, you need to understand how to recognize that you have passed from death to life. Did you catch me? Are y'all understanding me in here? Because to stay in death is to stay in darkness and to continue listen to evil. See, that's an evil spirit that can get on people. An evil spirit is the spirit that keeps you tormented. Right you can't stop thinking about it because mm. you're being tormented by that evil. Mm. Every time you try to think good, evil grab your thoughts and make you think bad. Because the evil, Paul said, I delight after the law of God, after the inward man, but he said as another law in my member, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my member. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me, 7th chapter Romans, from the body of this death? The evil in your flesh dwells no good thing. The work of the flesh will give the devil opportunity to war with your spiritual man, mm. your soul man. And if you don't learn how to talk back to that devil when that devil talking to you, if you don't know how to talk back, you'll think God talking to you. Mm, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You thought God told you something, and God didn't say nothing. I keep telling y'all, Israel had to contend with flying serpents and they were biting the children of Israel Come on. and Moses had to go take a brazen rod of a serpent and lift it up that everybody that lift him up live hmm. when the serpent has beaten you the Bible calls him the sword of discord hmm. he's a serpent when discord bites you it separates you from sisters. It separates you from the unity of the mind. Mm. It separates you because the thought of somebody saying something bad about you mm. calls you to get angry and offended. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just sit down and serve this up to you. Somebody going to talk about you. Mm. Whether you've done good or evil, somebody going to talk about you. My thing is, Give them something to talk about. Give them something to talk about. 
Somebody try to talk about me because they saw me pop like it. Amen. Uh, amen. Give them something to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> what do you mean? Because what you esteem to be unclean, mm. I don't esteem yeah. to be unclean. Yeah. So what's sin to you may not be sin to me. Yes, Lord. Come on, Pastor. All right. Tell it. Somebody can say, me drinking this Gatorade, I'm going to hell. Because mm. it's unclean to somebody. Yeah. That's how things are in your mind. You see somebody with pants on. You think they sin. Because it's unclean in your mind. Because you read the book of Deuteronomy. When Deuteronomy said, a woman shall not wear the attire of a man. Mm. So in your mind, any woman that got on a pair of pants, amen, she is unclean. Something mm. wrong with her. She ain't right. Amen. Woman wear. Ooh, touch it. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> That's some people's perception and way of thinking. Mm. Old school. I, I was telling the brother yesterday, a church next door over here. Amen. I came out of a church like that. The women wore dollies. The men couldn't wear short pants nor short sleeve shirts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to keep it rolled together. So what does all of this mean? Is that there is an evil in the land. That's right. And the thing that's going to keep you from the evil in the land is the mind of God. Hmm. Be not conformed to this world, yes. but be transformed by the written. Now watch this now. Anytime your mind is renewing, guess who's going to fight you? Yourself. Yourself. Amen. Because self don't like change. Amen. And when you have a problem with change, you resist it. Hmm. You don't like change. You don't want change. You don't want to embrace change. You don't want to embrace the power of change. And you cannot overcome the evil in this world if you don't understand the power of change. We have to love people hmm. that don't love themselves. Yes. Is it easy to do? No. No, it's not. Because when you, let me tell you why. Can I use brother Ruben? Brother Ruben, I want you to just start acting like hitting you hit yourself all in face real life. Just all with both hands. Just, just praise the stomach everywhere. When you roll up on somebody that's mad and angry, they are hurting themselves. They are the enemy to themselves. Now, when you find that a person is an enemy to himself, you got to be a you got to be careful how you deal with somebody that don't like themselves, that wish they could die, that hate themselves because they here on earth. Why I had to be born? Why you didn't have that? Why you didn't just take me out here a long time ago? Because he did not take you out because that was purpose for your life. First lady said something. Amen. You can be in a situation and don't see no way out, but it don't mean there's a way. That it don't mean that there ain't no way out. It's just that in your spirit of thought and your mind, there's no way out. Amen. If the doctors had their way, I would be in a wheelchair, and if I embraced everything they said, I would still be running around here having somebody wheel me around because arthritis would have me running around walking, needing a cane, because I, if I would have believed. All right now. I believe that what they diagnosed was true, but I didn't believe that this was going to be a terminal part of my life. Amen. No, I'm not going to be affected with no old man's disease. Right. Amen. 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 I just, so, so what am I saying? You got to resist the voice of the devil. You got to stand up against evil because there's going to be evil always in the world. Amen. 19. Read Acts 19. What we was reading that. Uh, okay. What did I tell y'all read? Six, 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 but when divers were hard, what was it? They were hard. Yeah. When people that have been offended in the church, they hard. Hmm. That means their heart is hard. Their heart is hardened about the church. Their heart is hardened about people in the church. And if you run across them, you hear him cuss out, folk talk about folk. Oh, mm. they can write about this. You and him even talk about me. Oh, yeah, well, no, Pastor, he ain't no good. He's such a, such a, such a, such a, such a. That, that, that's all right. That's all right. Mm. Hurting people hurt people. Right. Hurting people will talk about people because they're hurting. Mm. Hurting people will always talk about somebody when they can't get what they want. Huh. You want a hand, but you don't want to give up nothing. Mm. You want love, but you don't want to sacrifice nothing. 
you want something for free. All right, now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to live for God, you're going to have to pay a price. Amen. Oh, that's what you Salvation is free, brother. Yeah. But you got to give up your life. Right, uh. <laughs> Jesus paid the price, but you got to give up your life. Mm. And it, it missed me when people tell me, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I have a problem with understanding that statement. Because to me, it's borderline selfishness. Mm. Because if you totally committed your life to God, and you said, be, and you're letting this mind be in you, the mind of Christ don't give room for your selfish will. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. The mind of Christ don't give room for your selfish way. There's a lot of things I want to do, yes. but the mind of Christ won't allow me to do what I want to do. Now, I can override that and do what I want to do, but I'm going to find myself in disobedience to what I want to do. He that loses his life shall gain his life. He that finds his life shall lose his life. How many of you have found your life? When you find your life, that's when you hit a phone. I'm going to live my life. I remember 36 years old. I came into this identity as a young man. Yeah, I like me. I'm a man. I like my life. I like what I'm doing. Amen. Because I was living a double life. Mm. Amen. And when you live in a selfish life, I liked it, that VIP kind of stuff. You know, RSVP. You know, I got to roll large. I got to roll with the ball of ballers. Shot covers. <laughs> yeah, I roll in with the wealthy people. Come in with the powerful people. Hmm. Who you hanging with today, Doc? Oh yeah, you know he's he owned a couple hotels right there. You know that man there, your millionaire, he's an investor right there. What y'all doing at that table, man? We working a deal, man. At nine o'clock at night, that's when business is done. Because hmm. when I was in real estate, I was a loan officer. I was an investor. Hey, Amen. We wine and dine people, take them out to eat, entertain them. Get acquainted with them. Mm. When we come together and do investments, we go look at the property and talk together and hang out. And you know, we, you know where that's go with VIP. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let me get off this subject. Yeah, I'm feeling too good in this subject. Let me get off this subject. <laughs> so, but the Lord. Let me tell y'all something. That's why I can tell people. That's why I can tell you. Amen. When you allowing self, mm. you cannot live for Christ. And be all about you. All right. Amen. You got to think about brother. You got to think about sister. You got to think about mother. Because if you can go and live for God and don't think about nobody else and don't love nobody else, you are not living for God. Amen. You're not. Love for God is about doing for others. How do you know God but by your love for one another? Yes. Love. For one another, I'm going to say this again, it's difficult to love people Amen. that don't love themselves. Show not, Pastor. Yes, it is. It's hard yes, to love is. people that don't know what love is. It mm. is. So true. Try to get a woman, a man, and love her, and she done had some bad men. Mm -hmm. She going to always be judging everything you're doing. All right, right. What? what what that for? <laughs> what you want? Why you get me a gift? It ain't my birthday. Hmm. I was thinking about you. No, you ain't thinking. You want something. Hmm. Yeah. I know you mean. Yeah. No, you don't. That's you don't know a good one. That's true. Uh, See, if you knew a good man. Yes, Lord. You don't know a good man. That is. Because a good man ain't going down his woman. That's right. Hmm. He ain't gonna talk about her like she trash. Say it. He ain't gonna cuss her. He ain't gonna y'all ain't gonna hear. He ain't gonna curse her. Yes. He ain't gonna tell her she ain't no good. Yes. Every time you say that, you talking about yourself. You cannot separate the person you live with damning that person without saying and then you're going to get scot free. Uh -huh. Baby, y'all in the same pot. Right. Oh my God. Oh my God. And if you talking about the one you sleeping with, you are really a serious pothead. Say that, Daddy. How am I going to talk about the woman I'm in love with 
yes. yes. And with them and with, and then get in their face. I'm like, hey, baby, come on, that thing, you do that thing. Huh. You better go find you somebody else. Now, I did not say that because some of y'all might take that for real. Pastor told me, you, I'm going to give me another woman. <laughs> I want you to get, I'm going to close this. <laughs> Stop letting the flying serpents huh. bring up stuff that made you feel bad about yourself. And blow it back to your mind uh, to make you feel bad again. Uh, Amen. You was with that man. He told you you ain't no good. You never be nothing without me. You fat. You ugly. And after a while, you start believing what he said. Mm. And now you start eating them rind, poke rinds late at night. <laughs> you start eating them Twinkies and donuts and honey buns late at night. Eating all of them sugars at night. Hey. I'm not right there. I'm anyway. You don't want me anyway. Because what angry will come out of you. Come on, Pastor. Go on and say it. Say it. man put a ring on it, and you still talking about you don't want me, you got some serious sick issues. Because mm. to put a ring on it, that means he bought you for $85 now. He went and got some papers on you for $85. Mm. Which is what you want. And now you still with it thinking he don't want you. Hmm. That ain't nobody here. No. <laughs> ain't nobody true, here. true, 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 true. What did you know? <laughs> what am I saying? What am I saying? <laughs> I'm going to take this time out and say this. I'm a very intense person. When I turn it on, I get tone vision. I get really zoned in. And I don't have time for nonsense and foolishness. Because one folk, I learned early on, used to watch my, 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 uh, uh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan would turn on a certain focus. Mm -hmm. Then I got around some professional people. And then when I was working for 24 Hour Fitness, I was in a position to be fast track for manager. And right around the time when everybody had to get their quota, there's a zone that you get in. I worked seven days straight and get in that zone, 12 hours, bell to bell, hit, because I'm trying to make that money, get that paper, get that hustle. See, I'm a salesman. I was number one car salesman when I worked for a car salesman. Several times I was number one. In other words, they teach you in car sales, you must overcome the objective. People got objectives, the reason why they won't buy. A salesman job is to overcome those objectives before, amen, they ask the question. That means every assumed question that you may think you have, he didn't already answer it. Hmm. It is the same thing with salvation. Salvation, he said, I counsel thee to buy of me fine gold. Everybody in here is a salesman. And you know what you're selling? Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to learn how to sell. I'm going to use this word. Somebody going to like this terminology that I'm going to use. But you need to learn how to sell the product. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. You need to learn how to sell the product. Come on, Pastor. You are a living witness that was in this book work. Mm. And you ought to want to sell it to somebody. Yeah. You ought to want to convince somebody to buy was in this book. Oh. Listen, man, you need to buy this. You need, I, man, when I when I tried this here, I was in a mess. I was tore up from the floor up, amen. But when I tried the Lord, when I tried trusting in him, when I tried looking to him, he came into my life. All of the stereotypes that was there, when I tried it for myself, I found out that it was the truth. I found out that Jesus is good, good, good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, better than sliced bread, better than bread on honey. I uh, tell you, when you try the Lord for yourself, somebody said, try the Lord, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, 
you want to taste him and see. You need healing today. Why don't you taste to see if he's a healer? You need deliverance today. Why don't you taste to see if he's a deliverer? You need a breakthrough. Taste and see if the Lord is good. Watch him bring you out of this situation. Watch him deliver you from the hand of your enemy. Watch him bring you out. Watch him make a way out of those. Yes. All God needs is a grain of mustard seed faith. Can one of you go in my office, Mike, and get that grain of mustard seed off my desk? Some of you want to come out of a situation. Yes. You ain't got no money. Yes. Mm. I'm going to give you a testimony, give you a miracle to show you how to get out. Yes. My wife knows this works. When I cry to God, I ain't talking about that there was a certain cry. I cry to God. 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 Somebody lay hands on me. <laughs> but when I get through pulling that stuff out, yeah. I know some stuff can be changed. Yes. I was down there warning this morning, Sister BJ, because say, man, I was warning on her. Oh. <laughs> Of what God wants each and every one of us to have. Mm. He gives you a seed that comes from this book. Mm. This seed, which is the word, grows in you. Now, what the seed do, it changes the way you think so that you won't live toward the evil mm. that's in the world. Yes. There's some evil that's in the land. It's evil for a person to act like they love God. And then take advantage of God's people. Mm. That's, evil. That's, right. That's, right. That's evil for a pastor to sit in the pulpit and have people and all he about is money. Mm. It's evil for a pastor or for you as members to look at your sister, amen, as a paycheck and not as a friend. Amen. It's evil. For you to have a relationship with somebody and all you want them for, amen, is to help you get to where you want to get. Because, amen, they that extra $350 you need, but you ain't got no love interest in them, only the $350 they're going to give you on that paycheck. You got game. See, some of you got so much game that your game is tricking you. Mm. You got con game. You got sneaky game. You got deceitful game. You got tricky game. You got crazy game. Stupid game. But the game always splits on you. So when you sow to the flesh, you reap to the flesh. Amen. Now, now this is for my young people here, and I'm done. You young people, you put on good masks when you get in the church. Yeah. But Monday, when mama, dad ain't around you, I'm talking to you teenagers, I'm talking raw to you. You just as hoish and sleazy as you want to be. That ain't everybody. Now I'm using that vernacular because I've seen some of y'all Facebook posts. Well, well. You know, I've just been sneaking through, you know, fishing through and watching. And if I had to go by what I saw on Snapchat and saw on Instagram, and you were my child, and I would take my belt off. And I would spank you. Mm. Especially some of you young ladies in this church. Because there's no way, young as you are, you should be acting like you acting when your mother is not looking. Amen. Because when you get pregnant, if your mama having a problem raising you, mm. you know you ain't ready to have no baby. Amen. And if you 15, or if you 16, and you sitting up here vacillating having sex, you don't even know how to stay clean, let alone stay sex. Yeah. I better get off this one. I better get off this one. I better get off this one. See, 
Because you wash don't mean you clean. I need the old folks up in there to help me out now. But young girls, y'all ain't like men. A special way y'all need to clean. And if ain't nobody told y'all that, we want to talk to you that these other older folk show y'all how to stay clean. Mm. And after you stay clean, I'm hoping that they tell you how to lock it up. Mm. I need to walk down this minute because men are predators. They are like they are like hunters. Mm. We like hunters. And we be watching. And a real hunter, he'll look over all the other women. Mm. That week when he looking for. That one that got that low self esteem. That one that didn't have no daddy. That one day man that's insecure. That one that look pretty but don't know they pretty. That one that got a fine body but got a crazy head. That one that look really good but stupid as stupid as stupid. And what we do, we tattoo. Yeah, man, yeah. Let me see. That's Monday. That's Tuesday. That's my money, girl. Well, well, well. That's my fair weather, girl. Well, That's my I can go to any time. I can go to any time, girl. Yeah. I got saved in 19, so you can imagine what I was doing when I was 15, 16, and 17, and 18. So, man, <laughs> we were bad. Mama go to work, amen, and left us to do what we want to do, Brother Dwayne. Mm. Amen. My little brother and I, we were kind of how many girlfriends we had. Oh, yeah. Come. One time I had 10. 10 girlfriends. I didn't know what to do. I just had girlfriend. I wasn't doing that well. But when I was in the military, it became a real thing. Mm. I wasn't talking then. <laughs> Ain't no Filipinos in here. No. <laughs> now, my point is, there was evil in the land. Yes, Pastor. And the evil got in my heart. Yes, Pastor. And I practiced the evil. Mm. But it wasn't until truth came. To uh -huh. shine the evil out. Right, right. Evil is always around us. Yes, it is, Pastor. But the evil can't touch you uh -huh. when you're in God's mind. Mm. Yeah. An evil person can come around you, and you can be in God's mind and in the spirit of God. And that righteousness in you will drive that evil person. They'll get up from around you. They'll walk out. They can't not be in your company long because of the God that's inside of you. Don't be one of them radical believers, amen, where you ain't scared to sing Jesus' song wherever you go. Amen. You're going to be sitting by yourself. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. When I met my wife, and I'm cold. My wife, my interpretation of her when I met her, she was going through something, and she was like, oh, I'm just going to tell Jesus on them. Y'all just like, Jesus and get y'all for messing with me. I'm going to tell Jesus on God. Oh, yo, I can't get this. I can't. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. My interpretation of people like that was they were a little bit off. Hmm. <laughs> So you can imagine my first experience when I was seeing this. I was like, okay, she wanted them kind. All right. <laughs> and so I don't know what it was. Was it the hospital? It was something. But she was like, she wasn't listening to the person. She was telling them what Jesus was saying. Mm. Oh, well, the Lord, God, Jesus is going to heal me. He don't. I was like, dang, she really didn't listen to what I was saying. But she had Jesus. Watch this now. Jesus became the tool that she used hmm. to fight off any and everything. Amen, Pastor. Now, I'm not going to knock that, but that ain't how I fight. Because sometimes when you constantly, Jesus go do this, Jesus go do that, Jesus got me, you ain't listening to sometimes rational reason. Hmm. And you kind of borderline on being spooky. 
Because no, 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 I'm gonna clean it up. Now listen to what I'm saying. What did the Bible say? My people error for not knowing the scriptures and the power of God. When you don't know the scriptures, you don't properly know how to rebuke the devil. Amen. Because if you're on your job and the boss man tells you, you fire and then you break out in the name of Jesus, the devil is alive. The devil is alive. But you've been late. Yes. Mm. You've been in violations of policies and rules. Maybe that ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. That's all on you. That's what you follow what I'm saying? See, people will put Jesus in places where they need to be responsible for their own responsibility. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I mean. Stop using the name of the Lord in vain when really what you're going through is your fault. Mm. The boss man requires you to be on time, not on your time. You come at 8.15 because you got this notion that the Lord and Jesus is on your side and you can regulate when you come to work. Mm -hmm. You ain't eating right. And the doctors tell you you got high blood pressure. In the name of Jesus, I tell you a lie. But you eating all that pork. You eating all that high blood pressure stuff. You eating stuff you ain't got no business. Now you want to blame it on Jesus? You can't blame that on Jesus. I'm just telling y'all the truth here. I want y'all to stop getting in the ignorance of flesh and stop putting stuff on the Lord and take ownership of your own self. I don't know why the Lord Jesus keep letting me be homeless and not on the street. I do, because it ain't Jesus' fault that you won't pay your bills. Stop putting Jesus in there. Oh, no, Lord Jesus, they don't think I'm going to rip me. They don't come take my car. I can't talk no. They don't come take my car. I don't know what they're going to do. And then the repo man show up. In the name of Jesus, they will put my car down. No, no, no. You stop putting that on Jesus. Mm. You have an earthly responsibility. You came in a contractual agreement and you broke that agreement and they have a right to come pick up their property. How are you going to put Jesus in that? As if Jesus went and signed that contract. You went and signed that contract. They don't give you no car because you saved. They give you car because you got credit worthiness and you got the money to pay it. And they got a man in some instances, they got so many cars, they're just trying to get rid of them. Yeah, I'm going to bust a whole lot of y'all bubble. Y'all <laughs> but I'm going to take away y'all weapon of defense. Mm. Your children. you going to get mad at your children. You ain't fed them. And you wonder why they acting out because they're hungry. Mm. They steal it. Because they ain't got no money. They hungry. And then you catch them stealing. And now you going to beat them halfway crazy. Mm. When they ask you for the lunch money. And you decide not to give them to it. Now they go steal what they want. And now you going to beat the H-E-L-L out of them. Well, oh, I know I'm in the house. Uh. Oh, and some of you need to take responsibility for what you did not do. Because you were part of that action. Because you could have prevented it if you would have just gone gay. Because you had it in your pocket. Uh. I'm sorry, I gotta get on this here. Young folks, if you got a bunch of children, all your money ain't your money. If you got kids, they need a shirt, they need tie, they need clothing, they need food, they need this. So you can't spend all that money just on you. Mm. And if you got three, four children and you the only one working, you ain't got no business buying them no hundred and twenty dollar shoe. Mm. I don't understand that fashion. If you got a size five she feet, amen, and you eight years old, amen, with a size five six, and I'm gonna spend a hundred and twenty eight dollars on you for you to grow out the shoes in three months, that devil is alive. <laughs> 
I'm going to get you some good shoes. They may not be Nike. They may not be Jordan. But they're going to be good. Mm. Then you're going to get an app. Mm. Then you're going to get an attitude and roll your little bit of neck and roll your eyes. Why you don't want to get me what? You don't take out the trash. You don't wash your dishes. You're going to pick up your room. And then you're going to pick up your clothes. And then you're going to go pick up behind yourself. And you want me to give you some extra money. Amen. No, 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 no. Amen, amen, amen. I got the camera working. I can't get out. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. All right. One more time. Let's get this community. And then go get the community stuff again. Listen, I'm closing on this here. God wants us to no longer yield to the evil but to the good. Amen. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil, evil. with what? Good. good. Why do you do good? Because can't nobody harm you if you be a follower of that which is good. Amen. When you zealous about doing good, I, I, I'm a zealous person about good works, doing good, because that's who I am. That's who we are. We're about trying to do good, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you're supposed to be. Provoke one another to do good. Provoke your sister to do better than what she's been doing. Yeah. Provoke your brother to do better than what he's doing. Amen. And as I close, if the devil has been tormenting your mind by using your past, because somebody in your past always want to remember what you did back then, because they mm. forgave you. That's right. That's right. You need to stop talking to them people because right. they ain't trying to let go of your past. No, right. So I'm not going to be hanging around somebody right. that keeps trying to remind me of what I done come out of. Yeah. I know I'm free. Yeah. I know I'm delivered. Jesus. But you want to hold me in bondage. Jesus. You stay bound. But I'm going to shout in your face. Yeah. Uh. I'm going to praise God right now. I'm going to give it glory right in your face. I'm going to lift up my hands right in your face. I'm going to magnify God right in your face. It's because I recognize, amen, that tomorrow ain't promised to nobody. Mm. So since I recognize that tomorrow ain't promised to nobody, I ain't going to shoot some of my blessings today. Yes. Let you hold a thought against you. Yes, yes, yes. Mother, mother is seen from 70 plus, 75 years old. 75, she's been on planet Earth. Mm. Now, in her 75 years, she's seen a whole lot. She done saw her daughter when her daughter was TikTok. And she was probably looking, <laughs> what the hell did they look alike? When she was like, yeah. <laughs> now, she done got in the twilight days. And she's observing all the fruit of her labor. Mm. Praise God. She see her daughter. She see her children. She's seeing those that took heed and those that didn't take heed to her training. Mm. She seen the one that was obedient and the one that didn't obey. She seen the one that was just like her husband, daddy. Amen. That's like her dad and the ones that just like her. Mm -hmm. Seventy-five years, she sees it. Yes. I want to get there. All right. I want to be seventy-five. Yeah. I got twenty plus years to get there, but I want to get there. But while I'm here to make your days be long, y'all should respect your elders. Yes. Come on, y'all folks. The Bible says respect your elders. Don't never let the devil get into your head, young lady, young boy, and make you disrespect your elders. For the crumbs of the low man. I love Sister Low Man. She clean all the time. Mm. <laughs> Even at a season age, yeah, she yeah. still lets you know look good when you come out. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 74. I want to know if she was 74. Hallelujah. Look at that. See what I'm saying? You don't look 74. Fix herself up. Dress herself up. Come out here look good. And you know your Listen, I know if you ain't got clothes, but if you ain't got one or two things, fix it up, make it look good, fix your hair, come outside, put on some smell good, and be clean and be sharp. Amen, Pastor. Amen. 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 Amen
I say that to some of you. I say that to you. Now, I'm going to say this to some of you and I'm going to pray. Some of you that are struggling with raising your children because you're still a child yourself. Amen. Amen. Oh, you grow because you didn't grow up. Amen. Right. Thank you. Because when you got children, you cannot be all about you. Mm. You've got to sacrifice for your people. Amen. People feel me struggling because there were two kids, two. Stop raising mine. Okay. Try going to the grocery store to feed nine children. All right. Six boys and three girls. And the girls eat more than the boys. Mm. Yeah. 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 Someone that's much older than you. Mm. If you're 15 and there's a 25 year old person in you, that's your elder. Yeah. If they 30, you respect your elder. That's right. And you that are 30 and those young people that are respecting you, they want to call you. Don't let me call me yes, man. D -d 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 miss that. Shut up. Let them mm. call you yes, man. Yeah. Because that's establishing a precedent that if they say it to you, they'll say it to somebody else. Amen. I was taught. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. May I? Please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I can. We didn't talk. What? How? My bad. What you say? What you say? Who you think you talking to? That part right there. <laughs> you ain't talking to your friend. You talking to your mama. So no. Well, you don't talk well, to your mom or your daddy any kind of way. So no. Where's the respect in that? The Lord is in the house. Roll your naked across your eyes. My mama would have slapped the teeth out of my mouth. Joyce in there. Roll in your mouth. And she was in earshot close to you. Woo! Pow! <laughs> mama, what are you with me? You grown enough to roll your eyes at me. Hmm. Y'all don't know. Hmm. Y'all don't do that cast. Y'all don't know. They don't do that cast. We got whoopings for the slightest little thing. Yeah. I got a whooping for saying what to a grown older person. Hmm. Lady called me. I said what? My mama heard that. What you say? Come here. She grabbed my ear. <laughs> Oh, I had big ears then, you know. I, they big now, but my face that ruined. <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? Respect is important. It is, Cassie. Young people, you want love that energy. Even in promise land. For some of you that are teenagers that feel you grown. Tell them, Pastor. You are not grown in these Show grown women not. in this church. Right. Hmm. Show is. And, be, and because you a young 18 year old don't mean you fully grown that you can stand That's right. grown tell them tell them tell them you look grown y'all are you grown that's because right you first lady because right. you got big bottoms don't mean you got everything in your head together right. mm. come on pastor the men don't judge your head they judge your body amen because your head amen your head ain't talking when you land in the bed All right, now. the legs are open when you land in the bed I love that teaching pastor Want from y'all? Teach them that. Some of you little silly women, thirty-year-old women, that got two-year-old babies, oh, and got these old knucklehead, sorry men that been dating you for six, eight months, and ain't got no mind to marry. Mm -hmm. Ain't gonna marry you because you got children. Yeah. Yeah. Teach them that. And you run around here can't function because you done fell in love. Oh, that, that right there. Come on, Pastor. Come on, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out, Captain. <laughs> When you commit, when you commit a dog, y'all hear me real good. I know ain't nobody doing that, but if they is, I'm just for you. If you are committing a dog, that means you're sleeping with a married woman or a married man. You are violating somebody else's property. Yes. You are trespassing mm -hmm. on somebody else's man 
Because that woman owns that man because she got papers on that man. And you sleeping with somebody else's woman or man. Well, they ain't living together. They still married. Mm. They ain't reconciled together. But they can't reconcile because you got your own boys way up in there. Oh, 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 Because he needed you to feel like you. you think he feel that point. You better take it from somebody that's an ex. If a man is sleeping with you, come out, Pastor, and you the side chick, and he ain't left his woman, he ain't gonna leave her to get with you. You just do it for you, but his wife ain't doing it. I got, oh, I got a lot of shit here, brother. I'm gonna leave this alone. Watch this. Right, you to listen to somebody that's an ex. Right, See, ain't nothing more better than sneaky love. Uh-huh. <laughs> that sneaky love is an adrenaline that comes up. I'll meet you at the park. Meet, 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 meet us down there. Mm. We, we, we gonna meet up there and, and we gonna get in that party and now man, and you setting it up and not recognizing that there's something behind that is after your soul. Mm. Adultery hunt for a precious soul. Mm. You are a precious soul, and the spirit of adultery is hunting because she is a destroyer. She's a destroyer of families. Mm-hmm. She's a destroyer of people's lives.